what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and my god, take a look at that feature. This is the brand new Xiaomi Mi Mix. The new world's most interesting phone in my opinion. So you remember the Sharp Aquos Crystal from a couple of years ago, that bezel-less phone that I've showed before, but with the chin that kind of made it look like an old Zoom HD? This Mi Mix is a 2016 reincarnation of that concept, and it's beautiful. I love seeing companies go all in on like crazy unique gambles like this. People like to keep saying smartphones are boring. Well, sure, we've technically seen this before, but this phone takes it to the next level. I don't care. It has a 91.3% screen to body ratio, so almost no bezel on any of the three top sides and a small chin. Uh, the huge display flows right up to the edges of the phone, so it just kind of looks and feels like you're holding just the display in your hands. It looks like the future. And this time, it's a 6.4 inch display, so you're fitting an absolutely huge screen into the footprint uh, just a little bit larger than some phones today that have a 5.5 inch display. Uh, it's obviously still gonna be a huge phone for pretty much everyone, obviously. I couldn't reach all the edges with one hand, and I usually can with any phone. But of course, Xiaomi thought of this and they included in the software a unique little, little feature to bring the navigation buttons further up reachable on the display. So you can reach them at any time. Fun fact, this is also actually a 17 by nine display, which is why videos don't completely fill it like they did with the crystal, but pretty much everything else does, especially if you capture your own media. And the corners are curved. I don't know how much resolution from the official number you're gonna be losing from this, but that curve, that is pretty. All four corners of the display are curved. And like I said, the chin isn't even that big this time. This feels much more 2016. You still have all your display drivers and your hardware and the front facing camera and everything down there, but it's now all in a chin that's still smaller than the one in the Pixel, which isn't even bezel-less, obviously. Uh, it really makes other phones' bezels and edges look big. So the advantage, again, to having this display go right up to the edges, one, the camera, the viewfinder, looks amazing. It kind of looks fake at first, actually, but yeah, taking photos and videos with this camera is sick, really immersive. Uh, watching videos is also dope. When it's a native video, since it's a 17 by nine display, you also leave the nav buttons up and don't lose any screen. But if it's YouTube or something, some third-party app, it hides the nav buttons and then you get these little black bars. Still looks pretty great, though. And yeah, just generally everything involving content, you're gonna have this much more immersive experience. The display looks great. You gotta get like a sick high-res wallpaper, obviously, get all your apps and games. They're gonna look great going all the way to the edge. Now the disadvantage, uh, number one would be, because it's so close to the edge, accidental touches. But the edge rejection in the software already seems pretty good, so that's a good sign. Uh, so the biggest con now is probably durability, because you know, obviously, if you drop this thing without a case, it doesn't stand a chance with almost no protection. And this polished ceramic body is about the slipperiest phone of all time, seriously. And as far as I know, there's only one case for it, the one that comes in the box, and no skins for it. So really, really, it's incredibly slick. Uh, if you don't like the included case, you're out of luck, but I guess at least the one that it comes with is actually pretty nice at keeping the modern look and a pretty frameless image. Now, this is already miles past the Sharp Aquos Crystal as far as usability. You can see it's running Android with MyUI on top of it. We already saw the usability feature for having the big screen. And that's because this phone is actually going to be sold. It has a price, roughly 500 bucks, and a date that it's going to go on sale, November 4th. So this thing is real. Uh, the phone you're looking at, the one I'm holding right now, has a Snapdragon 821 chip, six gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, a 24-bit high-quality DAC, dual SIM card trays, a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, and a 16 megapixel camera. It's ready to hit the streets. I mean, these are top-notch specs. So the proximity sensor that's usually in the top of the phone has been replaced by an ultrasound sensor for the same purpose. And the earpiece for hearing your phone calls that's also usually at the top is now a piezoelectric speaker that vibrates the metal frame of the phone to generate sound. This is a smartphone concept slash dream come to life, and I am more than happy to share this kind of stuff with the world. Again, an easy route for a company you've never heard of is to just build something that's really close to what's already familiar with people. That's a big reason why you'll see so many iPhone clones. But this crazy gamble of a phone that they actually made, that's actually meant to be sold, I love it, I love it. It's like if you said smartphone design was getting boring, this one's for you. Welcome to 2016. It's not even available in the US right off the bat, but I hope it does well enough over in China that they do bring it over here. I'm glad it exists. What do you think? Would you rock this? Just throw a Pixel launcher on it and call it a daily driver? Let me know. Feel free to sound off in the comment section below. 
that's been it. Thank you for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.